Welcome back, everyone, to Reign of Chaos Rustling Ascend. We're going to be kicking off the show this week with women's action from 2KCW. We got Akira Yamashita coming out here first. She's going to be taking on one half of those suicide blondes, Cindy Danger. This match really to assert themselves in the women's division in 2KCW with starting off their. Clear record, clean record for the 2022 season. And of course, now this is a good opportunity for the Suicide Blondes because I'll be perfectly honest, they haven't exactly recovered well since being taken out of the Girls Grand Prix tournament a number of months ago by the debuting Tori Crawford and Tia Green. And they lost their spots in the girls grand prix so a little bit of a bounce back here for cindy danger of the suicide blondes for more formidable team are the blondes and even in singles action they are competent competition And of course, Akira Yamashita is not accompanied by the rest of the Awakening because they will be in action later on this evening. Cindy Danger coming out here against Yamashita. And will Paige Storm be playing a factor in this match? I mean, she will be possibly one way or the other, but it's a matter of how she'll be playing a factor is what's important here. Cindy. Working on the left arm of Yamashita. Kick. Talk about kick missing. Akira back up on her feet. Waist lock countered by Danger into the side rushing leg sweep from Yamashita. Yamashita continuing to go to work here on Cindy Danger. And palm strike right across the face of Cindy Danger. And into the running drop kick. It looked like Kira was looking for something there as well, but it was unable to succeed in that venture. Double leg takedown missing by Yamashita. Tilt a whirl takedown from Yamashita. Yamashita's looking pretty good so far in this matchup here against Cindy Danger. Whether she can continue to keep this momentum is up for debate. Cover here by Yamashita gets a one count on Danger. And this might be the point where the match might be turning around as Yamashita panders to the crowd or entertains the crowd rather and not focusing on her opponent. She has control of Cindy by the back of the neck. Leaned up against the ropes. Yamashita looking for here a just a foot stomp right to the chest. With Cindy Danger into the head scissor, the legs wrapped around the neck. Carmen's carry counter by Danger. And now Paige Storm at some point. Storm introduced a steel chair into the ring. Cindy's got a hold of it, but was not able to. And, Referee has been distracted by Paige Storm here. And softball punch there from Cindy Danger, the referee. He, he was going to eliminate the chair and the match here, throw the chair out, but that had to go for the cover instead. Danger, power slam position. Over the top rope goes Yamashita. And now the referee disposing of the chair. But Cindy Danger with that Famouser. The arm assisted Famouser. Cindy Danger going up to the top turnbuckle here. Cindy Danger looking for the trouble. The bring the danger close. 
And that's gonna do it. I'm, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm a little surprised here that the go round puts away Yamashita there and hardly any sweat breaking off the face of Sydney Danger. Sign of respect here between Danger and Yamashita. I mean, it's good to see. So. Sportsmanship between the blondes and Yamashita. The folks coming up next, Joe Hennig in action. Well, we know for sure that's not Joe Hennig's music. Rather, this is Colby Carino, son of and former NWA heavyweight champion and ECW heavyweight champion Steve Carino. His son Kobe, still very young in his career. Obviously a second generation wrestler with that Carino name. Making his debut here for us in Rana Chaos Wrestling. Last, it was last week that we saw the debuts here on this show. We saw the debuts of Bobby Tyler, Chad Gable, and Jake Something. So we got two second generation wrestlers going to be competing in this match. Obviously, Joe Henning, son of Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning. Well, actually, Joe's a third generation with his grandfather, Larry the Axe Henning. We got third generation versus second generation here on Ascend. It is worth noting that Hennig is also coming into this match as a, with an 0-1 record, picking up a loss to Dominic Mysterio this past Saturday on Strike Zone, albeit with some controversy in regards to the referee for that match so Hennig has come to ascend to try and avenge the loss there earned by Mysterio off on the much smaller or inexperienced opponent in Colby Carino. Carino off the ropes, Hennig unable to capitalize, going for a double leg takedown. But Carino able to catch him. Hennig just Striking ability on display here against Colby. Sunset flip out of the corner. Goes into the cover. A one count from Carino. And like a former Twitch champion in his own right. Also have to be noticed, be making note of that as well in his career. Like to get back to that point. Off the ropes goes Hennig into the takedown from Colby. And Carino with the advantage here over Hennig. And for the moment, double leg takedown this time connects from Hennig. here on Colby Carino backbreaker Just dragging the lifeless body of Colby Carino shoots the half into the cover referee again taking his time I'm sure in Joe's mind he would have thought that would have been a three count he's got vendetta against this referee here 
And lock control sweeps the leg, goes Colby. Working on the left knee of Hennig. Off the ropes, Hennig. A roll drop kick of sorts from Colby Carino into the cover. Not even a one count on Hennig. And Hennig immediately back up on his feet. Victory roll by Carino. Be enough to pick up a victory? No. It'd been a huge upset for Colby Carino to knock off Joe Hennig here. Leg drop by Carino. And the rolling neck snap from Carino. There's a common move in the arsenal of the Hennigs. Rolls in the cover. One count from Joe. Colby working on the collarbone of Hennig. A super kick there from Colby. As they didn't put enough must on that, put enough stank on it because Joe is immediately back up on his feet. Mushroom stopped there by Colby. Into the cover here on Hennig to pick up the victory. Hennig. Gets the left shoulder up. Off the mushroom stop. There by young Colby Carino. Now rear chin lock applied from Colby onto Hennig. Hennig immediately with a bigger frame gets back up on his feet. To the top turnbuckle goes Hennig. Colby trying to tee off here. Hennig answering back with another sunset flip. This time rolling into the cover here. One count from Carino. And now Hennig. We're going to set up Colby for the perfect plex with the bridge. And Hennig picks up the victory here on Ascend. Over a very game Colby Carino. Hennig now gets back, well, a victory of sorts. It may not be over Dominic, but he's getting a victory back. And now Hennig's... Oh, come on, you won the match, Hennig. Now he's just stomping away on Hennig. Hennig stomping away on Carino, and now Hennig's grabbing a mic. What happened on Strike Zone was a travesty. I was robbed of my match because of that idiotic referee who, surprise, this time can actually do his job properly and count to three. Dominic, I won a rematch. This time, an even playing field no pinfalls a submission match the punishment I inflicted on Colby here is nothing to what I'll do to you on Saturday daddy better teach you a new move son well there you have it folks plain and simple we're gonna have a submission match on Saturday between Hennig and Mysterio coming up next tag action from 2KCW Smooth and Silk coming out here first. In tag team action, we saw last week more tag action from two, to the 2KCW roster. Red River Connection picking up a victory over the C Batteries. And I'm actually being told right now that there is going to be a new team debuting this Friday on 2KCW and it's not been formally announced who this new team is but it's a, a familiar name that I've been told that a certain 
a certain aspect of the wrestling fan base may know. Um, I, I'm not told any more than that. that they're a familiar name and that they're coming this Friday. So I guess we'll have to be on the lookout for 2KCW this Friday, but a new debuting team nonetheless. So as the Awakening are here now, and again, Akira Yamashita competed in our opening contest in the losing effort against Cindy Danger. So they are without Yamashita. Uh, Kira Matsumoto, calling an elbow tie up here to Isaac York into the corner. Referee forcing a break, see if we get a clean break. We do. A little surprising there by Isaac York to get a clean break out of him. Open face slap there. Roundhouse kick from the former tag team champions. Nice butterfly suplex there from Matsumoto. Isaac York with the leg drop over the left knee. Akira Matsumoto. Now into enemy territory. Tag main. Here comes Dynamite Curtis. Off the ropes. Double clothesline from Smooth as Silk. Of course, there's the other half of the Awakening Jushin Sakamoto. So you get to make the tag up and over the top rope, and now I bid, I bite my words. There comes Jushin off the tag. And he's taking it to Dynamite Curtis outside the ring, which I don't think I would ever want to be in a fight against Dynamite Curtis. I mean, just the size of that man is the one of the biggest amount of muscle mass out of. Well, three other men in this matchup. And up and over. There you go, and Sakamoto. Gonna get taken down here by a wrist lock shoulder tackle there by Dynamite Curtis. And Curtis just trying to get a better position here. Tag made. Here comes Isaac York. What a win this would be for half and half suplex from Sakamoto. What a win this would be for Smooth Silk if they can knock off the former tag team champions of 2KCW. Tag main, here comes Akira Matsumoto. Looking for here an assist across body from the former tag team champions. Matsumoto working on the neck of York. Suggest that Isaacs better give the tag in to Dynamite here. Doesn't want to be withstanding too much punishment here against Matsumoto. A solid right hand, right to the right between the eyes of Matsumoto. York in control here. Trying to look for another double team maneuver, but Matsumoto able to. Anticipate it and send him across the ring back to his own partner. What do we got here? We got a brain buster into the frog splash combination from the awakening. And now a tag made here comes Dynamite Curtis and Sakamoto just barely recognizes a super kick right to the upper back of Curtis. Curtis now off the ropes into the drop kick. Beautifully done there by Jushin. The jawbreaker from Curtis. The running single leg drop kick of his own, and Sakamoto immediately back up on his feet. Round and around we go. 
Sakamoto able to fight out of this hold here from Curtis. Combo strike Jush and Tornado DDT. Light enough with a combination from Sakamoto. Curtis with the leg strength is able to shake up, shove off Sakamoto. Tag mater comes Isaac. Not sure what kind of exchange there was there, but Dynamo or Isaac was able to get the advantage of that situation. Into the drop kick from Isaac. Cover now on the former tag team champions. No kick out by Sakamoto. Isaac's got to go for finishing maneuver to put the match away. Typically, I mean, typically you would think either that or just be able to try and get enough of a tag team assault here on Sakamoto. Get enough damage done. Sakamoto going for the outside right kick. And into the exclamation point, DDT. There from Isaac York. Cover here. Matsumoto there to save the matchup. And Dynamite trying to go after Matsumoto, but we got all four men in the ring right now. If any of the illegal men are still in the ring by the count of five, we're going to get a disqualification. But Isaacs got the Boston Crab on Sakamoto and Curtis and Matsumo are still fighting on the right side of your screen there. The referee taking a lot of liberty to start the five count. Tag main, here comes Matsumoto now legally facing off against Isaac York. Duo of drop kicks, couldn't get the third, looked like, or maybe the right foot right elbow. Matsumoto's back in this matchup. Cover here. Only a one count from Isaac. The rate at which this match picked up was unbelievable. Sharp elbow right to the noggin of Isaac. Kick out. Now the respected partners are back on the apron. Well, it looks like Matsumoto's going for a street jacket kind of situation with a single arm, but he's got more like an Americana. Hold there on Isaac. Matsumoto into the snap mare. Another elbow right to the top of the Isaac's head. And now Matsumoto going for the Dragon's Breath. To Isaac. Keeping him far away from Dynamite into the cover to put this matchup away. Matsumoto picks up the win for the Awakening off the Dragon's Breath. Take a look at the replays. There's the combination there from Sakamoto early on in the match. A lot of strikes being thrown here in this matchup. Very really hard hitting affair. A tag team match here in our co-main event to really set the set the pace and the order for the set the pecking order for the tag team division over in 2KCW. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, our main event of RCW Ascend. We got Yuha Nation taking on Matt Cardona.
And here we go, folks, with our main event. Yuha Nation, the jack of all trades of the deck. Being accompanied by the first lady, Maria Canellis. Maria picked up a victory last week over Bobby Tyler here on Ascend. Yuha Nation challenged back when Dave Mastiff was the Twist Champion, challenged a couple of times for the title, it was unsuccessful in dethroning Mastiff. But Yuha Nation looking to pick up a win here over Matt Cardona. In our Ascend main event. As everybody knows my opinion on Matt Cardona. Here comes Matt Cardona. He was unsuccessful in capturing the title off Bobby Roode at Winner's Wrath in a great matchup. And it would be Cesaro the first strike zone after Winner's Wrath that he would become the new Twitch champion record setting three time champion here in RCW so it's only a matter of time until somebody knocks off Cesaro for the Twitch championship and could it possibly be Matt Cardona we'll have to wait and find out the self-proclaimed internet champion Main event underway here. Cardona, Tilt the World DDT, around the world. Yeah, Tilt the World DDT. By Cardona, immediately going after Yuha Nation. Speed will get you the advantage more often than not, but I mean, the agility that Yuha Nation possesses is insurmountable for his. Is unbelievable for his stature, and we saw Maria Canellas playing a distraction here against Cardona. The only way to even the playing field is if he had Chelsea Green out here with him. Got wrench suplex from Nation. Oh, a gut buster from Cardona. Right kick caught, turned into the Dragon Screw takedown from Nation. And the way I have to shorthand Nation, I feel like I'm at the UN. Left now on attack from Matt Cardona. Off the ropes goes Yuha Cardona underneath. Unable to capitalize, belly to belly, overhand, overhead, belly to belly suplex from you on Nation. You on Nation in control here over Matt Cardona. And now shoots the half, rolling him over, no legs hooked, one count from Cardona. And screw into the slam there. A dragon sleeper, excuse me. And now another gut wrench suplex from Yuha Nation. Taking down Cardona. And again, going for the slam here. It's almost similar to the. Uh, the 1916 or the Bloody Sunday from AJ Styles and Prince Devitt, respectively. Whereas he wouldn't wouldn't be that much of a surprise if Yuha did pick that up from Devitt, since again Devitt is the top-ranking male competitor in the the deck. 
if you want to call him that. I would almost say the leader, but I think Maria takes that takes that title in stride. Cardona in control of Nation, going face first off the ring apron. And now going for a little bit of an overdrive type of maneuver from Matt Cardona. Back in the ring we go. Cardona in control of Yuha Nation. Kick misses. Yuha Nation swinging neck breaker. John Burger counter by Cardona. Up and over we go. And another overhead belly to belly from Yuha Nation. The strength almost becoming too much for Cardona to handle. Kick out by Cardona. And now Yuha Nation going for a deep German suplex. Not going for the bridge though. Which is just an interesting no power slam position. Cardona hung out to dry on the top rope. Cardona answers with a punch. Quick right hand right to the abdomen of Yuha Nation. And now Cardona. Looking to set up Nation for the reboot. And it connects flush. Nowhere for Nation to go. And now Maria again distracting Cardona. A great opportunity opening. Looked like from the moment neck breaker for, for Nation. But Cardona had eyes on the back of his head when it came to Nation trying to take advantage, and now Cardona going for the radio silence, unable to connect. So, call an elbow tie up. The nation still in control, another belly to belly. I mean, how many, how many suplexes, belly to belly suplexes was that in this matchup? That's at least four. I mean, we know Brock Lesnar's the the mayor and purveyor of Suplex City, but you never know that. I guess Nation could be a, a diplomat from Yuha Nation into Suplex City. I'm just trying way too hard at this point. And a close line from Yuha Nation. Another swing neckbreaker from Yuha Nation. Before we had a count of five, these two better be aware of the referee's count. Count of six we go, Cardona. The wheel starting to turn, trying to get the crowd up height behind him. Cardona, top turnbuckle for the savage elbow drop. Connects, will this be enough to put away Nation? And it does, Matt Cardona picks up the win over Yuha Nation. A great comeback, great matchup here put on between these two, but Cardona with a little bit more of veteran experience gets the win over Yuha Nation. See the closing moments, the elbow drop from Cardona. And now Cardona picks up the win here in our main event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for our show this week. We thank you everybody so much for joining us. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any more action. When it comes to the Rain of Chaos Wrestling group, we will 
We'll see you next week on the set. Otherwise, we'll see you Friday for 2KCW.